Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shaper Sessions. My name is Jake. And I'm Russ. And we have a very exciting one tonight. Nice, fun, mellow session all about inlays and marquetry. Yeah, that's right. So if you've been paying attention, we've been releasing woodworking masterclasses over the past four weeks. This is our first time doing that, and we're really excited to share them with you. This week's masterclass is from a German inlay and marquetry specialist named Johanna Rohe and her specialty is inlay and marquetry. Um, so we'll show you the way that we do it, but really we highly recommend that you go watch all of her videos as well. She teaches you about thick inlay mm -hmm. and thin inlay. Um, Veneers type, veneer type stuff. Yep, uh, but today we're just gonna customize some little holiday presents yeah. that we've been working on. We're going to cut out some initials and inlay them into a nice cherry cutting board. Playing off of uh, last time that we did a session, which was about making holiday gifts, but we were doing engraving in that last one. This mm -hmm. is kind of a next step, a level up on yeah. personalization. Yeah. Speaking so. of the last time we did a session, I feel like it's been a while. It has Because been. two weeks ago, we were on Festival Live with Sedge, so we <laughs> skipped our personal sessions, and uh, we didn't get to do a and a in that show. Uh, so this is almost me reminding myself that please everyone should ask their questions in the chat and at the end of the show we're going to do our live q a yes and giveaway that's right so today we're going to give away a eighth inch collet which is super handy for inlaying engraving yep. um we're going to give away an eight millimeter collet which is great for bigger stuff um box joints big projects and then we're going to give away a roll of our newest accessory a one inch double-sided tape great stuff speaking of the one inch double-sided tape I want to remind you and all your friends and all your family members that may not own origin yet we're still in our promo it runs until the 23rd of december mm -hmm. uh so with the purchase of origin or the complete system you're going to get one inch double-sided tape one inch double -sided it's a great tape. one you're going to get an essential bit kit that's your three standard bits in a nice little mini sustainer mm -hmm. you're going to get a two-part training course with myself to get you up and running you're gonna get free shipping free classic. shipping access to all the master classes mm -hmm. and the bundle discount and of course the bundle discount we're on two hands now yeah <laughs> <laughs> six things but uh the one inch double-sided tape is a really nice one yep. um same as the two inch double-sided tape but half as wide exactly to enter into the giveaway for that one inch double-sided tape, there's going to be a poll question that's going to pop up at the bottom of your screen if you're watching this live. Answer that poll question, you'll be entered to win. We're gonna spin the wheel at the end of the show when we do that Q&A. Yeah. Another cool thing that just came out recently was a couple of new EDU-focused projects from our friend Eric Curtis, mm -hmm. which also has a little bit to do with inlays. He does a box project um, where he inlays, I believe, an image of Elsa. On, on the, the top, top of a box lid yeah. for his niece. Yeah, let's pull some of that stuff up so we can show folks, let's and then it. we'll get into cutting. So I have on my laptop here pulled up just the uh, the highlight page for this Johanna Roa inlay and marquetry masterclass, and you can see some of this project that she's working on here. It's a Japanese-inspired inlay, and that's going to be on the front of a cabinet. That project is also included with this masterclass. And for anyone to get this masterclass, you don't have to participate in the promo. All you have to do is go to this website, uh, which our buddy Ted will drop in the comments for you all. Uh, follow that link. That'll take you to this web page. Just click on Get This Masterclass. There will be a place for you to sign up with your name and email address, and we'll send you the link to those videos. It's a couple of videos from Johanna here. Um, all of this is in service of doing something cool with it. So to go along with that, she has put together this, I was gonna say cool, but it really it's just mind blowing. <laughs> it's epic. This project. <laughs> um, so she'll walk you through all of the fundamental steps that you will need to know so that you could make a cabinet like this and all of the inlay files for this uh, cabinet are included here if you just click that link. So we've got that. We also talked about this Eric Curtis project. He has three projects. One of them is this inlaid box. Another one is a hanging wall cabinet. And the third one, do you remember what the third one is, is off the top of your head? A small side table. A small side table. Yeah, so some that's tapered really legs. Nice. Very classic. And all of these projects have 
a progression to them, which is really cool. So with the side table, for example, he has a few different options included for what you could do with the legs to add some complexity to that project. So they're really great for anywhere from a beginner woodworker all the way up to advanced. So I highly recommend you check those out. I've also got this box pulled up here on the screen so you can take a look at this classic inlay. I believe this inlay was found via Shaper Studio, which we'll pop into later. And similar to the side table, this box also has a couple of different options. You could put drawers in the front. There are a few different types of lid that you could choose, box jointed or not. And he as well has videos that he's made for each of these projects. They're about a half hour each. And if you're interested in learning something, I highly recommend you tune in and give them a watch. That's what's new on the project front. Why don't we just dive in? Yeah. We got we got some cutting to do. We got some fine cutting to do because mm -hmm. Russ really wanted some, some nicely detailed thin letters. Yeah, crisp lines. So we're gonna see if we can pull it off. This is a live show, as always, um, and we're a little nervous about this one, honestly. Not because of uh, the cutting or anything, but just because the the removing the delicate part and transferring the delicate part. We're talking about. Uh, approximately a sixteenth of an inch long extended pieces of wood connecting <laughs> different parts of this letter together. And so just being delicate with that is going to be very important. So we've also got a sixteenth inch router bit in the spindle of origin over here. We're going to do some nice sharp corners with this. Um, but I think the best way to do it is just to cut one just and see how it. it turns out. Got to do it. Do it. All right. First thing, this double-sided tape is pressure sensitive, so when you pop it down, you want to make sure that you are doing, giving it adequate pressure, because we don't want these things to move on us when we do our finish pass. Next thing, if you hop over to my screen, we're talking about those really thin bits here. We're going to make sure that those are going in the direction of our grain, so that they mm -hmm. have the structural integrity. They're not going to snap on us, um, and we're going to be very ginger when we pry them up after. It's all said and done. And if they do snap, we'll just glue it back together. Say la vie. Because yeah. everything's going to fit so snugly, it's going to be completely okay. Exactly. All right. Working with eighth inch, eighth inch thick material, 16th mm -hmm. inch bit. Okay. Just Ready to do let it rip? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to step off to the side here so we don't get too much router noise in the mic. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, I'm really curious who's new to Shaper Sessions and who has been here for a while. So if you're new, just drop a line in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, we go back and read all the comments after the show. Ted is in the comments right now, kind of moderating and fielding all those questions for us, saving the good questions for later for Jake and I to answer live. But love to read where everyone's from and who's new to Shaper Sessions. Uh, if you are new, this is Shaper Origin, and uh, it's a handheld CNC router for woodworking and more. And so what's going on here on Jake's screen is that as he's moving the router around the outside of this letter, um, the letter was designed digitally. We have a cool tool to help with that called Shaper Studio that we're going to pop into later in the show. And with that digitally designed file that was sent over to the router, the router uses that digital template as a guide for what's basically autocorrect for your hands. So as Jake is moving Origin around, he's getting the router pretty close to where it's supposed to be. And you can see the spindle floating kind of independently of Jake's movements. What the spindle is doing is auto-correcting in real time so that the actual cut that we get is right on that line. And you can cut an outside cut to the outside of that template line like we're doing now. You could cut an inside cut, which is inside of the line, which is what we'll do to cut the negative in this cutting board for this letter inlay. Um, and basically the process here today is that we're going to cut this positive. Um, the positive will be our guide for the size of the final part. Then when we cut the negative, we can tune the fit of that using something called offsets. And I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there. Compared to some of the uh, 
previous shows that we've done, you might notice that Jake's cut settings are updating automatically as he goes around this part. This is a really cool new thing that we launched uh, not too long ago, about a month or so ago. It's called Auto Pass. This is our first extension, uh, paid extension for Origin. And what Auto Pass does is it saves you time and it makes you more efficient by kind of calculating the depths and offsets of your complete cut for you. Uh, so you don't have to update those depths and offsets as you cut around a part. So rather than Jake pausing to update depths and offsets, he's able to just continue around that part really cleanly. Um, and then Origin kind of moves through those different passes automatically, hence auto pass. We're going to be talking about that one much more in January. We're going to have our buddy Sean on the show. I think that's the first week of January we're going to be doing that one. So if you want to learn more about AutoPass, definitely make sure to tune in there. Yeah. All right. There we go. I got got in the zone. That's what AutoPass does to me. I like really yeah. just get into it. Uh, for that last pass, that finish pass, I definitely went a lot slower mm -hmm. because I had already cut the part free and I wanted to be really ginger around these uh, little end pieces. We got... A little bit of blowout? A little bit. And it's pretty much exactly where we thought we'd get it. Mm hmm Across the grain right there. Exactly. But that is okay. Mm hmm As always, I can't recommend enough. Oh, you know what it is? There's a crack in the wood. Oh, no. But that's okay. That's okay. We'll cut another one later. The rest of the part will fit just fine. Exactly. Um, as always, I can't recommend enough for people to get these flexible scrapers. A little one inch, one and a half inch flexible scraper because it makes getting under this thin material mm -hmm. so easy. This yeah. is the delicate part. This here. is the delicate part. You just got to wiggle your way under, mm -hmm. free things up. And oh. if you want to talk about really delicate, Johanna has a section on thin. Uh, veneer, commercial veneer, which is about one forty second of an inch thick, incredibly thin. That's like point zero two inches. I think this stuff is an eighth of an inch that we're working with today. Yeah. We also did a session with Ramon Valdez, who did this um, desert scene, the ship rock inlay uh, on the set here, and that's also made with commercial veneer. If you go back and watch that session on demand at sessions.shapertools.com learn a lot of great tips for working with thinner veneer like that all in all not too shabby yeah pretty good got my little sanding stick here just knock off any fuzz it's gonna get in our way mm -hmm. but not too fuzzy the 16th inch bit that we're using is a straight flute cutter mm -hmm. so we don't get as much chip extraction but the trade-off is we get a little less fuzz on the grain Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. let's hold that up to the origin cam so everyone can see it. We lost a little bit just on the bottom of that middle section there due to that crack, but that's okay. Oh, no, that's pretty good. the risk of doing it live. As Jake gets set up for the negative, the cutting board side of this inlay, I'm going to pop over into Shaper Studio over here, and we can talk about uh, kind of the pre-flight checks that we do for inlays like this. So why don't you pull up my computer here, Goose? That was the letter F, and I've already got this set up in my files as a studio design. So we can open that up here, and this automatically opens Shaper Studio. Now, first off, the cool thing about Shaper Studio is all the changes that you make in here automatically populate over to my files. They sync to my files, and they sync straight over to Shaper Origin. So this is an SVG that I imported. To import that, I use this file import feature over here. And what's most important about this is I want to know, without having to guess and check on origin, what router bit diameter to use. So we ended up using a 16th inch router bit. How did we know how to do that? We did that in plan mode over here. So in plan mode, you can set all of the same settings that you can set on origin. That's your cut type. You can see online, outside, inside, pocket, or guide. You can set a depth, which is useful for depth encoding, which is new with our latest system update Jenner and is useful for auto pass. 
You can set offsets over here and you can set bit diameters which define the green path width here. So you could see if I change the bit diameter here to an eighth of an inch and I zoom way in, look at these corners. So if I cut with an eighth inch router bit, these corners for the positive are not going to match the negative because we want these to be line on line. Same if I did that as an inside, sure the eighth inch bit would be able to cut all the way through this section of the F here, but when it gets to these smaller little points on the serif font, it's not going to be able to go all the way into that. So the next smallest standard size is at 16th of an inch and you can see that that 16th of an inch both on the inside cut and on the outside cut goes all the way up to that green line of that digital template that we're working toward. We can also check that out in review mode, kind of see what this is going to look like in a digital mock-up of our wood surface. So you can see that if we do this outside cut, we've got a nice clean shape that's exactly what we expect. And if we go to plan mode inside, now we would need to do a pocket cut on this as well in real life to clear out all of this extra space. But if we just by visualizing that outside cut, we can see that we are going to cut all the way to the ends of this letter all the way around. So this automatically synchronizes over to origin just by changing that to an inside cut. I think that should show up as an inside cut now for you, Jake, when you import that file. It did indeed. Nice. What did you like inch or half inch up from the edge? Mm, let's go with a half inch up. Half inch up. Yeah, half inch up and a half inch over, something like that. Beautiful. Whatever you think looks tasteful. I like it. Okay. And there it is. Now it's an inside cut. We actually want to do pocket first. Mm -hmm. Z touch as always, just to be sure. I'm just going to go for it with that 16th inch bit again. Okay. Pocket first, and then you're going to change that to an inside cut. Exactly. And okay. as always, uh, cut things to zero, a zero inch offset. Mm -hmm. Just to sanity check, test fit your piece, then move into your negative offsets. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. And we're going to expect probably a small negative offset on this. All right, so I'm going to step off to the side here again so we don't get blown out by router and dust collector noise. So this is pocketing mode. Um, pocketing mode is really handy for working with Origin. What it does is it locks that spindle in, similar to a standard plunge router, all the way through the main area of that pocket. And then when you get to the boundary of that pocket, that's when that auto correction kicks in. So you can clear out a wide area. And then when you get to the boundary of that template, the auto correction kicks in and it prevents you from spilling over the edge of your intended cut. Uh, the extra cool thing about that is that there is a buffer baked in with pocketing. So uh, you can be a little bit more aggressive in your cutting. Uh, we're not gonna be super aggressive with the 16th inch router bit, but when you're clearing a wider area with something like an eight millimeter router bit, you might want to push a little harder. That's what those offsets are for. And that offset is baked in with pocketing so that you can roughly pocket out a shape. Uh, you have very little risk of spilling over into the boundary of your part. And then you can go back with an inside cut, which is exactly what we're going to do today. Go back with that inside cut and clean up just that last little bit of rough edge that was left over. And that will give you a really nice line on line, clean cut and fit. When you're pocketing, it's useful to consider the difference between climb routing and conventional routing. Uh, conventional routing is where you are working against the direction of the spin of the router bit, so you're always pushing against the router. Climb routing can be a little dangerous. That's where you're working uh, with the direction of the spin of the router bit. And when you're using larger router bits, that can tend to grab and get away with you, get away from you. 
Um, with pocketing, you really do have to be mindful of that on your own, just like with any plunge router with uh, inside, outside cuts with origin. We've got that pre-programmed so that you automatically avoid that climb cutting. It defaults you to conventional cutting and it's really much safer and, and better overall, especially if you're using a nice, sharp, fresh router bit. Uh, good reminder, as always on the show, always clean your router bits. We try to do it regularly here and we're always happy that we did. All right, let's see how this fits here. All right. Now, it, typically for inlay and marquetry, we do what? Uh, approximately a four thousandth of an inch negative offset on almost everything? Yeah, point zero zero four. Yeah, very small. Um, but it really helps, especially when you have big inlays like the Shiprock inlay where that error, um, or not error so much as interference, builds up between parts. So if you have interference here and interference here and interference here, and you try to put all four of those parts together, it's a lot more difficult than just hammering one snug fit in. Yeah. Precisely. How are we looking? So we're at zero, zero, and we are line on line. It doesn't want to go in. Mm -hmm. So I think that four thou is going to be the sweet spot. Yeah, we could do just a little bit. And for reference, that four thou is about the thickness of a piece of paper. So very thin. And we're just going to shave a little bit of that off. May have also noticed as I was going through, I noticed my auto speed was a little high. Mm -hmm. So I bumped that auto speed down to below the default um, of eight inches per minute. And it just helped give me a little bit more control around the corners. Um, and for something like this, I'm definitely relying on auto holding that green button to do these sharp turnarounds. Yeah, absolutely. All right, give that one a go. So if you look at this ship rock inlay when we get back to the uh, main view over here of the session set, you can see that's got maybe six or eight parts compounded across it and you could imagine that if you have interference with just one part you could maybe mash it together but if you have interference with six parts then you want to give them a little bit of room to breathe and so we'll do this four thousandths of an inch offset and that gives just a little bit of room for glue that gives a little bit of room for you know grain irregularities and the beautiful thing about origin is that you really can make these very fine adjustments again this is about the thickness of a piece of paper that we're taking off of this inlay negative and i suspect that's going to be all that we need to get this letter f to fit in there just absolutely perfectly all right that is what we want to see it's starting to there fall in already maybe a tip tap with a hammer, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, hammer's risky business tonight. I can see it going in though. Mm hmm. I wonder if it's got a little bit of warp. If it already had that crack in it, that wood must have been moving on us. Yeah. What do you say? <laughs> what do I say? I know this, this is your cutting board. I know it and is. You let me cut it. Yeah. Bold. Why don't we give it just another two thousands? Because it's going to just fill in with wood glue, and the wood glue is going to blend with the maple. There it's you go. It's going to be really perfect. Two thou. All right. Quick two thou. Oops. Quick two thou and a quick reminder to ask any questions that you have in the chat. Ted will field as many of those as he can and any longer form questions he'll send to us, we'll read those off of a document from the computer. At the end of the show, that's for live viewers. If you're viewing live also, please make sure to enter to win the giveaway. We love giving stuff away. Today we're giving away a roll of one inch double-sided tape, a new accessory in our store, an eight millimeter collet, which allows you to use some of the larger router bits that are out there 
and then a small eighth inch collet which is very good for small work like this detailed inlay, also detailed engravings that you might want to do. To enter that giveaway, answer the poll question that pops up at the bottom of your screen and we will spin the wheel toward the end of the show. Okay. Busting the chisel out, we don't do that often. Yeah. Cleaning up a little bit. Yeah, there's just a little bit of a tail. Ah, I see. That I knew was gonna get in my way. There you go. It's almost there. You know, I think this moved around on me. Here's uh -huh. the other difficulty with cutting thin parts is as you cut them, they move. So you have to go really, really slow on that finish pass. Okay. I don't want to make this too much bigger. Huh. Okay. May I could I could pound it in, but I don't want to. Because I know this is going to your parents. Oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> and I'm going to make another letter F. But you could, uh, you can see how it fits really well, which is, uh, you know, kind of the funny thing about doing it live sometimes. That top section is perfect. It's just right here on that delicate part that like stuck out do we want to try again because we've we're a half hour in at this point what do you think about I that? i could cut a quick letter f yeah what do you say we try it again this is turning out to be a little bit shorter of a show than i expected honestly so we can uh, do one a little bit closer to the middle of that uh closer to the middle of that piece of inlay wood yeah and we're going off script here but we know that, oh, yeah, look at that huge... Show that to the camera. Didn't even see that. But It really have. held together until we cut it free. Until it didn't. Yep. Um, we can do that. And, you know, there's one thing to make a mistake, and then there's another thing to make a mistake and then learn from it and try something a little new. So I think the thing is to cut from the middle on this one. And uh, I don't know, is there anything that you think we should do differently to prevent that movement that you were talking about? Slow down my auto speed. Okay, right, because that was very fast yes. at the start. Okay. And that's, I think that's gonna be the, the winner there. And now the people can see the one inch double-sided tape in action. We have a three inch wide piece of inlay <laughs> material. So why be wasteful with your double-sided tape when you could use the one inch tape to fill in that gap just perfectly? And if you've been watching sessions for a while, you know that I have a tendency to overdo it with the tape. Because mm -hmm. the last thing I want is something coming loose live. There we go. So classic workstation setup, um, bringing that support bar in so that your material is flush with the top. The nice thing about doing the positives of the inlay is that you really don't have to be as meticulous about gridding if you grid at all. You can just scan and go. Um, and one thing that I really like to do is to use the image on origin to look at the grain and see where I think this inlay part will look best respective to the grain. So you can place that more uh, free form. Yeah, that looks great. Bingo. Do an outside with a 0.01 rough offset. We're okay. ready to go. Are you going to auto pass this one again? Sure. I minimize that to two. Looks good. Okay, great. Pop off screen over here. And you know, we can always adjust if, uh, if it looks a little off. We can compare to the uh, original F as well to see if it looks and measures approximately similarly. This is the tricky thing about doing uh, tenons and inlays and all of this stuff with origin not so much tricky but unexpected you know with uh standard i don't want to say standard this is standard woodworking now but with uh, more old school woodworking you would typically cut the negatives first and then the positives to match so if you're um working on mortise and tenon joinery the old way to do it is you 
cut the mortise first and then you cut the tenon to match. With Shaper Origin, you cut the tenon first and then you cut the mortise to match. You bring the tennis to the mortise. It's just a little bit easier this way. Same with inlay. We cut the positive first originally and then the negative. Um, so it's a little bit of a leap of faith to cut the negative and then the positive. But, you know, we're pretty confident in this tool and confident enough to try it again live. So we'll just see how it goes. Going negative first and then positive second. All things considered, it should be just about equal in size when we go to that zero inch offset. Cleaning out that, uh, any dust in there. I will say that is the downside of using a straight flute small bit just gonna happen you're gonna get compacted dust mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i'm suspecting that this might have been not helping me in my finish pass gotcha you know what i could do i could grab you a dental pick from over here sure we're going we're going deep off screen we need to have a uh, like a helmet cam over here so that you can go on adventures with me everyone watching we're looking for a dental pick Maybe the best thing we can do right off the cuff here is these tweezers. These look like they'll uh, they'll really get in here. All right, coming in. These will be nice for uh, cleaning that up. How's that looking at first Beautiful. glance? Oh yeah, that oh, is it's... impacted. That's for sure. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Definitely want to clean that out, and that's with a little bit of an offset still, right? Right. Okay. And you know, it's up to you on on something like this. You. If you're confident in your origin skills, you could do this straight to zero, mm -hmm. as long as you're steady. You wouldn't have to use a rough offset. I don't say that often, because I believe in, in rough passes and finish mm -hmm. passes. The cutting forces are so light when you're doing inlay and marquetry work that you really can, if you're careful, you can really just go right down to the line. Exactly. It's, it's very different than wrestling with uh, the 16 millimeter clearing router bit, for yeah. example. Right. Nothing's going to get jerky on you. Wow. Yeah, this is clean enough. Yeah, it's really jammed in there. Classic trade-offs. Um, to go even farther, right, we could be using a down-cutting router bit in this case, and that would really prevent any fuzz from popping up on those edges. That's what we do. That's a small difference between this style of inlay with the thicker veneers and a thinner veneer, like with this 42nd of an inch commercial veneer that we use for the shiprock inlay. For that shiprock inlay, we used a similar diameter router bit. It was a 1 16th of an inch, but that was a down cutting helix. And so what that does is it shears the wood not only across but also down yeah. and it prevents any of those fuzzies um as we like to call them from getting attached to the part so uh it eliminates any cleanup that you have to do after the fact but that's this is the trade-off there is that you really run the risk of jamming the chips into the cut mm -hmm. i'll tell you another thing if you're not allergic to bit changes mm -hmm. go through and do your first pass with an eighth inch bit your mm -hmm. standard eighth inch bit that's going to bring all that uh that dust out of the cut then finish cut finish pass with the straight flute 16th and that's going to give you a really beautiful cut mm -hmm. okay okay thanks for bearing with me great so what do we have left to do a finish pass on the finish pass with the finish pass great So hopefully this prompted a few questions for everyone. Please drop those questions in the chat. And we're nearing the end of the show here, so we're going to be answering those questions live in just a couple of minutes after we do the test assembly on this second part. So we've got a few in there already. Keep asking, and Ted will send those questions over to us. Um, reminder also that 
Again, we're in a kind of promo period here at Shaper Tools from now until December 23rd if you buy Shaper Origin. Not only do you get access to these master classes, which really everyone who signs up gets access to these master classes, I want to remind you that you don't have to buy anything for those. Um, please sign up. We would love just to share that information with you. But so not only that, you also get when you buy Origin a free roll of double sided tape. Uh, that's the one inch. You get a free essential bit kit, which is a quarter inch, eighth inch, and engraving router bit in a nice little box. You get two part training with Jake. That's two approximately one hour sessions on how to get started and going with Origin, kind of everything you need to know to get up and running. You get free shipping. And if you um, bundle in plate or shape or workstation, you get that bundle discount. And that's from now until December 23rd. All right, what do you think, Jakey? Gorgeous. All right, nice. Let's give this one a go. Worth cutting again, if you ask me. Yeah. You know, I am going to say, though, I am going to be... We went out on a limb and did this live. I am going to be a little bit embarrassed if the second one doesn't work. <laughs> right? It's like a little bit higher pressure. I'm not even worried. All right. All right. You heard it from the man himself. Yeah, that came up easy peasy too. No breakage on this one. Jake did um, convince me to increase the size of the smallest feature on these letters from 0 0.06 inches to 0 0.08 inches. So they're a little beefier. I would say a little less tasteful, but also much more likely to come off all in one piece. So yeah. there we go. All right. Maybe a little bit of sanding stick on that one. All in all, that is... It's a nice letter. It's a nice letter. Um, you know, I just pulled the questions up here out of curiosity. And while you're sanding that, we did have a question on what size is the letter that you just cut. And so it's about two inches, top to bottom. Um, and the smallest feature on that is about, again, 0 0.08 inches or two millimeters wide. And that's the, uh, the very tail ends of the serifs on this letter F. The radius on everything is, um, the radius would be 1 32nd to match the 1 16th router bit that we used. A little bit bigger than 1 32nd because you never want to go straight all the way into a corner. You want to give it a little bit of breathing room. All right. Okay, here we go. It's the moment of truth. I'm holding my breath a little bit. Slow and steady. Yeah, you have to home one. There it is. Very nice. And there it. Can I go all the way in? Yeah, I'll pull it out with double sided tape or something. Okay, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. There's lots of little parts that want to come together. Oh. Huh? What was the other letter that we were going to do? A P? A P. Should have done the P. Really? Because it's all connected? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Get. I don't want to tap you in with a mallet. We could tap it in with a mallet. How's the back of a chisel? Okay. Gently. Hey, there we go. And that's kind of the trade-off that you fundamentally have to make to get that line-on-line -line fit, but... That there's, is there's no arguing with the crispness of that finish. Super nice. There we go. I like that back of the chisel tip. <laughs> just a little bit proud. Also, it's just a little bit proud so that mm -hmm. we can sand that off. That's a little inlay tip. Yeah, exactly. I think the material is 0.13. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went 0.125 th deep. It's easier to go. sand the letter flush than anything else yeah absolutely thank you for hanging in with us <laughs> yeah holy smokes that was a nail biter uh, we'll see you then thanks everybody bye everyone